approvals, commercial building permits, and temporary use permits within the noise impact area shall be accompanied by a noise impact statement. Mm -hmm. Is that is that accompanied by a noise impact statement for the use being considered, or a noise impact statement from what the <coughs> is doing? Because it doesn't really flesh that out. We That's who it's from. Sure, and we we think since it's given from the county, it'll be from the county. But the language will be something we work on with Moody. The noise impact statement for us is like a cover letter. And basically the cover letter, and it's detailed in that next section, would essentially say you're not being required to improve or construct additional standards. However, if noise is a concern, here's a map of where those noise levels are currently and where they used to be. Mm -hmm. Because the current levels for us, for A10s, are very small. But in, I think it's 1992, I mean, the noise levels, we had a very noisy airplane. It was incredibly large. <coughs> and so we want to arm them with information to say, look, if these missions change, it could very much get bigger. You may not be affected by noise under an A-10, but under an airplane like an F-35, you certainly could be. So we arm them with a map, and then we arm them with basically a, an ordinance that the county and the regional commission worked on with some consultants to actually tell people, how thick should your windows be? How thick should your walls be? What type of construction improvements would you make if you were trying to reduce the level of noise in your home? And so one of those documents would trigger this statement, that map, and that copy of the ordinance, which is about 20 or so pages, that would detail out what those changes would be. The compromise there is instead of requiring those improvements to take place immediately, it would just arm them with communication saying, if you think noise is an issue, we highly encourage you to work to consider this in your construction. And so that's the, the change and the compromise. And when I say the compromise for communication rather than construction, it's because part of the direction is certainly going to a place where you require those when, for example, new construction is complete <coughs> or when there's a substantial renovation. But at this time, we've not gone that far. We've just taken a step towards getting that ordinance and that information out there, um, as opposed to what's now, which is very, very little. Because when I went back and read your summary of the noise mm -hmm. issues, you know, it seemed to me that the whole reason for dealing with the noise issues at all is that the county can't enforce what we have now. Yes. But but that is not in turn a good reason to lessen them or weaken them mm -hmm. just because the county is not enforcing them. I mean, the, 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 the principle is still there. Mm -hmm. The reason for having them is still there. It has not changed. That's right. So why would we weaken them just because the county is not enforcing them? That could be a recommendation from the commission, is to say, we don't think communication is far enough. I mean, that is a fair and valid position to take, but what I'm trying to put on the table is something that I feel like is going to be enforceable and takes us down that direction of something that is better than what we currently have. Because what we currently have, to me, is not clearly reasonable, and there are issues with requiring a property owner to spend thousands of dollars for their structure based on, to me, codes that are too weak to require that level of improvement. I think initially, you know, Commissioner, they were trying to, um, in my opinion, very very quickly take a stab at trying to do something about noise, because noise is so key to the MAZ. To me, noise is about safety. I mean, the MAZ is about safety and noise. So I think they tried to do something, um, but ultimately, I think what we're here now is trying to build on that and try to make it a, a better foundation. And I know from where you come, Jason, but I mean, I don't know that you're seeing the other side of that argument. And that is, the noise is about protecting Moody. I mean, this is something that no other base really has. Mm -hmm. we, we are fortunate that we have a noise, these noise procedures in place to protect on encroachment from noise issues. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have homeowners going out there building something and then suing the base or suing, you know, to, because of the noise. So I, I guess I'm coming at it from a different standpoint. But um, Commissioner, that's valid. That is a valid, you know, the part where I depart is I think that there's a cost to consider. And it's one thing to say it, it, is, it is worth protecting Moody, but at what cost? And to me, the cost to bear for a property owner is something we at least have to consider. When we run those, those numbers and realize, gosh, those, that increase, is that truly worth the level of noise and the complaints that we have now? That's the that is a hard decision, but that's why we're here, is to look at questions that are real and valid, and that's that's how staff has at least shaken out on that one. Um, 
If you're going through these, you, you make several of the same changes. Oh, start. excuse me. Are you fixing to leave the noise? Because I want to comment on that before. Go right ahead. I was going to leave the noise. Okay. Well, let me make some noise now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had looked back through this, and, and what I'm seeing is exactly what was pointed out. The standards are being changed from required to suggested. Mm -hmm. And I don't think suggested is protective enough and this is what we're looking at is protecting the base. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it was unenforceable because it referred back to this ACOS study. Mm -hmm. And what I'm asking to be considered is that it be put back in as required. And instead of referring to the ACOS study, that the study itself be put in the actual text. Mm -hmm. Now I realize you know, the, the reaction is the cost. And it's true, there is additional cost. It's, according to the study, between 5 and 17%. Mm -hmm. But also to be considered is that these, these areas in the MAZ are being assessed at a lower tax rate than properties that are not in the MAZ. So those additional costs would eventually reach a demerge point where they're getting their money back through lower taxes. So I, I, I think that argument can be you know, fairly muted. Uh, Mr. Commissioner? Well, I, I'm saying, and, and you know, the houses are going to be worth more for resale purposes, and of course, the quality of life is going to be better because they're living in a in a, in a, in a better better built piece of property. But they have a, they, they're, we're not. It's not 100 percent that they're going to get a tax break right now. That's they're looking at it and they're working at it. But it's not 100%. Well, that, that's, a, that's a different issue. That's what the county commission is talking about, an additional tax rate. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is right now, currently, because I checked with the tax assessor's office, that those properties are assessed at a lower value because they are in a noise area. Okay. Just okay. like if somebody next to a railroad track property not worth as much as somebody not next to a railroad track, somebody next to an air base it, it, it's not worth as much. So it's already being done. In fact, it's been done for the last 70 years. And if the county wants to add some additional incentives to that, you know, so be it. That would be a wonderful thing. All right. But, uh, yeah, they are. <coughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and I think all that needs to be taken in consideration. But what we need to do is to make that base competitive with other communities. And that's what it's all about. And other communities are doing things to make their bases more competitive because they want the business. Now, the A-10s are gone sooner or later, and it'd probably be sooner. As I understand, the Department of Defense has already not funded them. I think they said if politicians <coughs> want them funded, they can put the money in there, but they've asked for them to be removed. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a mission change or a base closing. So we just need to make it as competitive as we can. And I think the noise abatement is, 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 is a prime function in that. Because uh, these nuisance lawsuits, or some of them won't be nuisance lawsuits, I mean, that's going to be an image, and that's going to be taken into consideration when they start looking at who gets the next mission when this one leaves. I, I would like to just, just add to that, just just talk about this a little bit further too. It, mm -hmm. on, on a stick belt, stick belt application, that may be an area where we could enforce those sound regulations, if you will. But on a manufactured in or a modular home or something, I don't know, how, how, how would you enforce that at that time? I'm just curious. If somebody mm -hmm. had five acres and wanted to put a double light on there. To me, sir, unless you... True answer is I don't know. But... I have a hard time believing that it lets you catch that manufactured home when it's actually being manufactured. <coughs> My sense of the inspection department is they're very limiting on what improvements you can make to a manufactured home. I'm so just curious about mm -hmm. if somebody want to put a, those two types of structures mm -hmm. out there rather than a stick bill application. Sure. I mean, I can verify with inspections, you know, how far could you take that as far as improvements, but I have seen them in the past limit what you can do to a manufactured home because that's part of it being manufactured is it was built a factory setting rather than a stick built home that is 
be able to be modified and built on site. At this point, Mr. Paulson, I, guess I, I don't know. think the ACA study uh, addressed mobile homes. <laughs> I'm just I'm thinking through that. But again, I want to make it clear, I was only talking about new construction and rebuilds and add-ons that would be uh, roughly 50% of the original cost of the building. I follow you. Not going back and putting this financial burden on existing dwellings. But how the mobile homes would be handled, that's a good question. It wasn't in the ACA study, as best I could figure it out. <coughs> and we do have provisions where the single uh, mobile home is replaced, it has to be replaced with a double, double wide, uh, whether that would require this according to the study, mm -hmm. if it's not specifically exempted, then I, I presume it would. Uh, I follow you. To me, I, what I hear from you and Commissioner Folsom is, you know, you'd like to see a direction that is um, more restrictive and more supportive of those construction improvements on new construction and substantial improvements. And the manufactured home question is just out there, but the overall direction is um, communication for y'all is not far enough. You you want to get closer to that construction side, not just the communication side. I follow you. Change suggested to require, and instead of referring to the ACA study, have it spelled out in the actual text, just for clarification. So it's required, I'm just curious, is, is, and I know what Mr. Rick said, so it's required a blanket? The word that you do put a mobile home manufactured homes. Well, I'd have to. I need to verify what improvements are truly permittable when you try to improve a manufactured home with windows, you know, walls, etc. Basically, you a lot and pick one out to bring it to. That's right. I mean, and that's the other aspect is, you know, we do see some definitely brand new manufactured homes, but we see a large portion of used manufactured homes where someone just buys them from another location or it's already been lived in, and that's a, that's a large portion of what we're permanent for. And I don't, and I, that's why I need to ask, to me, inspections is who I need to... I, need to ask <coughs> I know Commissioner Paulson had some more questions. My, my, my next one is, it's more of a suggestion than a question. That is, I think you've cut on this so many times, and maybe the whole uh, ULDC, that I think it's time for you to maybe get the county attorney to help